Okay. Now I'm back. Got more clean sand. And like I said, you're going to be recycling this stuff constantly. Ah. The fun part is moving these heavy things once you get them all filled. I'm going to put it right down there where that burn mark is. That's where the uh, thing is. Now, those little bars, that's pure ingots. These are purified aluminum from the last, from the last pour. Are some ingots made from the uh, cupcake plate. They're all going back in the fire, but I'm also going to use a lot of soda cans, and I mean a lot of soda cans. Soda cans are 60 percent junk. Because they're so thick, it takes quite a while for these to melt back down. Recognize some of this stuff? 
disposable aluminum pans, well, guess where they're going? Right into the fire. machine gun effect is because I got it so full, it's right up and blocking some of the gases. But that will clear out as soon as it burns down. Okay, it's starting to clear up a little bit. There it goes. Here's another gadget that you're going to have to build. All right, it looks weird. What that is, is a handle lock. That, you slide into the two handles, holes in the back, and it locks your uh, lid to your body when you're pouring. Now, I can't make you one in advance, okay? The reason being, You've got refractory sticking up from the body, refractory sticking down from the lid that you're going to contour. I've set a gap of a half an inch, but you might have 5 eighths. You might have 7 sixteenths. I don't know. But that gap is going to dictate the distance from here and here. So this is something you got to make after the furnace is done. What I did was I took a piece of cereal box and stuck it on the one side of the two handles and took a pencil and traced it out and then that gave me the OD of, of both arms and then made this 11 sixteenths and about three inches long and it works perfect. It locks the handle in. Matter of fact, once you've got it locked in, you can grab this and lift your furnace with this. It's that solid. <coughs> but again, this is something you're going to have to uh, draw up and make when you get your furnace done. Because this dimension de depends on how much refractory you still got in between the two. I made it out of 3 sixteenths or 7 gauge steel. Okay, what else can I tell you? Oh, yeah. Now, I was telling you about skimming out the slag and all of the debris. All right. Now, I'm hoping I'm holding this in the right spot. Here's my spoon. And it's on a four foot stainless steel handle. Here is my degasser, welded on the end. You put your baking soda and wrapped in aluminum foil in here, stick it in the bottom of a pot, wait and watch for bubbles, and stir like crazy. Oh, yeah. Don't, when you're done stirring and there's all kinds of aluminum on here, don't bring it out and wrap it on the side of your furnace. That's refractory. It'll break. And you'll say nasty words for hours. Okay, back to the spoon. I did have slots in here 
they weren't wide enough, I'll have to recut them in. You want holes in it to let the aluminum blow through, but the slag is so bulky, so thick, heavy, that it won't, it'll catch the, the slag. And you are gonna have a lot of slag if you're using just soda cans. Believe me, you got probably 60% slag from soda cans. You've got plastic coatings, you've got paint coatings, you've got all kinds of junk incorporated in a soda can. I don't know if you've ever done this by mistake or deliberate, but if you take a Coke can, put it on a shelf, six months later that Coke can will be empty because the Coke ate through the aluminum can. It's that thin. So, try and find lawnmower mower decks, blowing up lawnmower engines, cylinder heads, engine blocks, anything that is pure or better quality aluminum. Break it up, cut it up with a reciprocal saw, whatever, and mix it in with your soda cans. Matter of fact, I gotta skim out some flag now.